Hey guys, Steve from Vorsprung Suspension and Whistle here. Welcome to another episode of the Tuesday Tune. This week, we are having a look inside this thing here. This is the damper cartridge out of, uh, a fit grip damper cartridge out of one of Fox's new forks. Now this is Fox's new, more budget oriented damper. This replaces the open cartridge assemblies that were found in the Evolution series forks uh, in the past, which were problematic. They were recalled at one point. Uh, the recall solution was not amazing. This, however, fully addresses the issues that the Evolution series cartridges had with a bit more. So let's have a look inside this. Have a look at the performance potential that we have in something like this that is supposedly the low end. Uh, the low end cartridge that Fox make. So the basic layout of this damp cartridge is fairly similar to uh, a fit cartridge in some senses. That is that you have your rebound adjuster and your rebound assembly at the bottom of the fork and your compression assembly up the top. This is the damp tube here. This is the rebound piston, compression piston. And this bit here is uh, quite interesting. So this is a dynamic bleed system. So this has a compensator piston, an IFP, uh, that's spring-backed. There's a little bit of friction in this. It's not super terrible, but noticeable. Um, and if you can see in there, that little groove that's machined into the, uh, the inner tube there, basically when this piston gets up far enough, the seal on the inside passes that groove, and it will allow any excess oil out of this cartridge here. That can then come out through this hole over there. And the big advantage of this is that it allows for the fact that no seal is a perfect seal. So over time, oil will get drawn in into the cartridge through this uh, dynamic seal here in the seal head. As that overfills this cartridge, uh, we now have a method of allowing the excess oil out. Now this idea isn't new. The first people to bring it to mountain bikes were Avalanche, I believe, unless anyone else can uh, correct me on that. Uh, but this sort of system with compensator piston uh, has been used in motocross forks for a very long time. It is the default setup for Showa and KYB forks among others. Uh, it's the same sort of system that you'll find in the Olin's uh, STX cartridge for the Fox 40. Uh, it's a very good system for a number of reasons. First of all, it pressurizes the damp cartridge. Secondly, it seals the damp cartridge obviously so we don't have air in there. Uh, it automatically bleeds air out the top because this system is at the top of the fork where obviously air rises to and it also is a volume compensation system in terms of both allowing for the fluid, displa fluid displacement there uh, as well as keeping the correct volume of oil in the cartridge in the first place. So this addresses the really big problem that the Evolution series cartridges had where they would suck oil in but lacking a compensator piston here this top part was a sealed and they were an emulsion damper. So what would happen is oil would get past the main uh, damp shaft seal here into the cartridge and it would overfill and eventually the pressure in there as you know you have the displacement of this shaft entering the cartridge the pressure in there as the oil level got higher and higher would get substantially higher to the point where it would either blow the uh, seal head out the bottom which was rectified with a uh, the recall the recall however installed a check valve up here that was like a pressure relief valve so once the pressure got too high it would allow excess pressure out there the problem with that is that it allowed air out rather than oil so eventually you'd still have the same problem with oil overfilling but now you'd have no air volume in there to act as your volume compensation and actually force the oil back through the check valve in the compression piston that would then lead to cavitation in rebound uh, which is interesting phenomenon Basically that manifests as a severe knock, especially in the trail or the climb modes, not so much in the descent mode. So anyway, this system fully addresses that, much better system. This is now actually bolted together instead of pressed together uh, and held together with like, the top cap screw, which was uh, another shortcoming of the Evolution Series cartridge. On top of that, we now have shimmed rebound damper. Now this is something that is pretty cool in, you know, again, a low-end fork. Uh, the piston is plastic, which is maybe a little cheesy, but whatever. If it does the job, it does the job. Uh, but having, like, a proper shimmed, shimmed rebound damper, uh, that is a, 
a very positive thing in a budget for. So the adjuster in this is quite interesting. As we turn this knob, let's see that little wave spring behind the shim stack there on the compression piston. You can see that this is now applying preload as it moves that spool up and down as I turn this dial. So interesting feature of uh, this compression adjuster here. If you look at this silver spool and the shim stack just there, you'll also see that there is a little wave spring in there. And so as I turn this dial, it's basically winding in the preload on that wave spring and thus on the shim stack. So it's acting a lot more like a high speed adjuster typically would than a low speed. And this is quite interesting for a number of reasons. First of all, there's no low speed bleed through here. And secondly, if you look really closely inside the spool, you'll see on the inside there, there is a, a smaller kind of backing, like a smaller little stub on the spool, I suppose. And so once you wind this all the way in to this little lockout position, that now becomes a new clamp diameter for the shims. So that then makes the shim stack much, much stiffer. It gives you a very firm uh, lockout mode, which is pretty cool. However, there are some limitations to this. So one of the things that we find with this stock compression piston here is that this shim stack here has float in it. So it isn't actually pinned to a clamp diameter in the way that a traditional shim stack is until you wind the compression adjuster in far enough that it pushes this spool all the way in and clamps them there. And that's what gives you that nice firm lockout. So what that basically means is that the entire stiffness of the, uh, the compression damping really, because that can open quite a long way, the entire stiffness of it is dependent on this little uh, spring here. So basically what you are doing is using like a very weak high speed adjuster to increase your compression damping um, in the base valve here anyway. But unlike a lot of uh, shimmed valves, simply revalving this won't actually do very much. That is a bit of a limitation of that unfortunately because otherwise uh, this is a very promising damper. Fortunately at the other end uh, we do actually have a standard shimmed configuration that can be revalved um, and that gives us you know, a lot of a lot of potential for improvement, modification, and customization there. So that is pretty cool. Plastic piston, notwithstanding, but that said, if it works, it works. So here is a more conventional layout of a fit cartridge. This is out of a older fit RLC, actually, which predates CTD even. Uh, so it's not the most modern one. This is just something that we had kicking around in the graveyard. But basically, the main difference. Uh, that's visible obviously is that it uses a bladder as volume compensation instead of the IFP. So the bladder is lower friction, zero friction compared to an IFP. However, the IFP friction uh, is relatively low anyway. The amount of friction that you get from the IFP divide by roughly three to get the friction that you're getting at the shaft uh, and that will give you some idea of you know what effect it's really having which is not very substantial in my opinion. However, bladders don't substantially pressurize the oil, especially not near top out. Um, further you get into the travel, the more pressure they apply because they're being stretched. Likewise with the spring, however the spring does have the ability to pressurize it beforehand. Um, the other big difference here obviously is that this has a much more conventional shim stack. This is a ring shim setup in this particular uh, fork, but very similar to what Fox use across a lot of their different fit cartridges, the exception being the uh, RC2. The other advantage that the fit cartridges have at the moment is that they have an SKF seal head in here. Now the stock seal head on this is a little bit sticky by comparison. It's not terrible but uh, it's not anywhere near as nice as the SKF stuff. So the summary of this is that this fit grip cartridge is a massive improvement over the Evolution series cartridges. Like That really can't be understated. Um, for cost reasons, obviously Fox haven't gone with the same amount of machine parts, complex parts um, that are needed to make 
the same level of adjustment or the same degree of performance from the valving from the uh, the compression piston. Anyway guys, that about does it for this week on Tuesday Tune. Uh, any feedback, questions, comments, please leave them below. We're always interested to hear what you have to say. Anyway, until next week, see you then.